The 125th anniversary of Teaneck, a look back. Considered one of the best places to live in New Jersey, Teaneck offers its some 40,000 residents a host of benefits from beautiful tree-lined streets and convenient shopping options to great schools and top-notch emergency services. But the Teaneck of today bears no resemblance to what was here some 400 years ago. At that time, the area was inhabited by the Lenni Lenape Indians, who were led by the powerful Indian chief Oratam in the vicinity of what is now known as Fike Lane. This was the Teaneck explorer Henry Hudson found when he landed in this country in 1609 on behalf of the Dutch East India Trading Company. His arrival opened the door to Dutch colonial settlements in the region. Chief Oratam encouraged the colonization of Teaneck when he gave about 2,000 acres of local land to another key person in Teaneck's history, a woman named Sarah Kierstead. Living in New Amsterdam, Sarah acted as an interpreter between the chief and the Dutch during peace treaty negotiations between the two parties. The majority of Teaneck's first European settlers, mostly Dutch, built their homes around 1700 on the Indian trails now known as River Road and Teaneck Road. Some of those homes, dating from the 17 and 1800s, are still standing today. The Brinkerhof Demarest Homestead, built around 1728, it has the distinctive gambrel roof representative of Jersey Dutch architecture and continues to be inhabited by descendants of the Brinkerhof family. Other historical homes of note are the Adam van der Linne House and the Ackerman Home. Teaneck was a peaceful farming community until the Revolutionary War when Bergen County became caught up in the struggle. Robert Erskine, a map maker for General George Washington, put Teaneck on the map he made to track Washington's escape route from the British in 1776. Washington and his troops retreated from the Hudson River and marched across Overpeck Creek through Teaneck to then cross the Hackensack River and ultimately reach victory in Trenton. Throughout the war, both British and American troops occupied various local homes and Teaneck residents participated in the war efforts. After the war, farming continued in the area and life returned to normal. Teaneck's very first public school was built between 1810 and 1822 on what is now Fort Lee Road. This one-room structure served not only Teaneck children, but students from three neighboring towns. Most of the land around that time, as this map shows, was in the hands of large landowners like the Demarests and Felts. No single person influenced the development of Teaneck more than William Walter Felts. In 1865, the day after General Lee surrendered to General Grant, Phelps bought 88 and a half acres of land, marking the beginning of what was to become his vast estate. He continued to add to his holdings until he owned almost all of central Teaneck. In fact, one of the town's current landmarks, the municipal building, was the site of a sprawling estate Phelps built for himself and his wife. By 1886, it was called The Grange. Phelps was also responsible for planting 600,000 trees in Teaneck, laying the foundation for the tree-lined streets we enjoy today. But Phelps and other residents were not happy with the tax bills they faced from the neighboring municipalities of Inglewood to the north and Ridgefield to the south. So, they successfully pressured the state legislature to create a more local political entity, the Township of Teaneck, in 1895. The new form of government was a township committee and William Bennett was elected chairman, thus becoming known as the father of Teaneck. The three-member committee he led was housed in the second floor of a new school that had separate entrances for boys and girls. Further development in the community was spurred on by the building of a rail line that passed through Teaneck in the 1870s. It provided passenger and freight services between Jersey City and Albany, New York. Some trains took vacationers to the Catskill Mountains. 
By 1907, 66 passenger trains passed through Teaneck each day. Teaneck also had trolley service by the turn of the century. The trolleys traveled from Patterson to Edgewater on the Hudson River, where they connected to ferry service into Manhattan. With burgeoning development came increases in residents' tax bills. As this tax bill from 1907 shows, a property that was assessed for $975 incurred a tax bill of a whopping $14.50. A lot of money back then. That same year, the Cedar Volunteer Fire Station Company was formed and its firefighters used a hand-drawn hose reel to put out flames. In 1913, members of another volunteer outfit, the Teaneck Hose Company No. 1, built their own station house. Fire members were also known to have built their own fire trucks. The official police department was not organized until 1914. Their equipment included bicycles as well as motorcycles. The department initially consisted of a chief and a handful of patrolmen. Police staffing slowly expanded over the years, as did the staffing for the fire department. William Kaltenbach became the first salaried fireman in 1920, and by 1929, 10 other firemen joined the pay roster. The rest of the fire staff were volunteers. Teaneck's population increased almost 300% from about 4,200 in 1920 to over 16,000 by 1930. The demand for services stimulated the development of the Cedar Lane Business District, and it was the sale of William Phelps' estate which led to the subsequent construction of hundreds of new buildings in the center of town. In fact, the destruction of Phelps' home by a fire provided the site for the construction of the town's municipal building. By the end of the decade, a main street of shops and restaurant had also sprung up, and a movie theater followed shortly thereafter. Teaneck citizens also enjoyed library services back in 1912 as a result of the generosity of Louise Jordan, who provided neighbors with access to her private library of 200 books. The library ladies, as they were known, all volunteers, subsequently bought a cabin believed to have housed former slaves. That cabin was then used for the growing book collection. It was not until 1927 that Teaneck got his first tax-supported public library. Around this time, students in Teaneck were no longer learning in a one-room schoolhouse. The Emerson, Whittier, Bryant, Longfellow, and Hawthorne schools, as well as the high school, were all constructed before the end of the 1920s. The 1930s continued to bring major expansion. With the construction of the George Washington Bridge and the opening of Highway 4, Teaneck's coming of age was well on its way as a modern suburban community. Along with this growth came controversy over Teaneck's form of government. Residents were not satisfied with either Democratic or Republican rule and formed a nonpartisan council. This included the appointment of a full-time city manager. Paul Volker, a civil engineer, was given the position and remained in the job for 30 years. Milton Voti was another important member of the town council. He was also named chairman of Teaneck's first planning board. One of its first decisions was to dedicate Route 4 as a green belt, which restricted development around the highway to single-family homes. No commercial sprawl permitted here. It's fitting that the town's main park was named in Voti's honor. By the start of World War II, Teaneck's population had soared to about 25,000, and many of the town's hardy young men took part in the war effort. The 98 who never returned are still honored to this day in our town's memorial park. Post-war years brought yet another building boom to Teaneck. Two middle schools were constructed, hundreds of new homes and apartments were built, including some for returning war veterans. By the mid-50s, Teaneck had two train stations, one at West Inglewood Avenue and the other on Cedar Lane. 
The trip to Manhattan, including the ferry, took just 35 minutes and cost 46 cents. Unfortunately, lack of ridership caused passenger rail operations to shut down by 1959. Meanwhile, Teaneck was gaining attention as a model community in part because of its lack of crime. A photo exhibition of our picture-perfect community was assembled and traveled around the world, showcasing bucolic scenes of residents enjoying leisure activities, participating in democratic town meetings, and after-school events. But this model community was still in transition. Post-war migration was changing the demographics of Teaneck. Once predominantly white and Protestant, the town was becoming more of a melting pot with increasing numbers of those of the Jewish faith and more African Americans moving into town. However, the schools were not integrated as most African Americans were living in the Northeast Quadrant. After heated debate and much controversy, the Teaneck Council and its residents voted to voluntarily integrate the schools, making Teaneck the first town in America to voluntarily do so. Development continued to keep Teaneck as a central player in the region. Teaneck became the crossroads of the Northeast when Route 80 was constructed and connected to Interstate 95. And the opening of Glen Point became one of the earliest mixed-use commercial and residential developments in the state of New Jersey, bringing a significant increase in the town's tax base. Teaneck also expanded its police department to include a community policing bureau and improved training of its officers. It moved the police headquarters to a new, modern, well-equipped building. Unfortunately, this occurred in the aftermath of a tragic incident that took place on the night of April 10, 1990, near Bryant School. An African-American teenager who was allegedly armed was shot and killed in a police chase. Amidst the controversy and the public outcry that ensued, the additional changes to the police department were made and new programs for youth were also initiated, all to restore the belief that Teaneck was still a safe place for everyone to live. Teaneck's religious diversity and tolerance have also been mainstays of township life. A wide variety of religious institutions have been established since its founding to meet the needs of residents as the town's ethnic and religious makeup continue to change. Adding to Teaneck's quality of life has been the presence of the arts. From Teaneck High School's early marching band to the creation of the Puffin Foundation which provides grants to artists. Residents have always enjoyed and supported a host of cultural activities including the increasingly popular Teaneck International Film Festival. Teaneck's first symphony was founded in the 1930s and theatrical productions at local schools have appeared throughout the decades. In fact, Many well-known artists have been born and resided in Teaneck. Among them are singers Phoebe Snow, the Isley Brothers, Ricky Nelson, Millie Jackson, and jazz trumpet player and composer John Faddis. So now that Teaneck is celebrating its 125th birthday, what does the future hold? While no one knows, there is one thing that is certain. Teaneck today is poised to handle a whole host of new challenges and is certainly well equipped to do so with a superior school system, excellent library, top-notch police, firefighters and an ambulance corps, outstanding parks and recreational activities, responsive nonpartisan government, a state-of-the-art medical center and finally, citizens striving to live in peace and harmony. We are confident that Teaneck will not only survive but thrive for the next 125 years and beyond. I'm Randall Pinkston.